Hello, I'm Maria Hall Brown. I am here at the Emergency Operations Center for the City of Los Angeles, and I am delighted to be joined by the LA County Public Health Liaison, Carmina de Santiago. Lovely to have you here. What is a public health liaison? So, a public health liaison for the county to the city is somebody who communicates from the city to county and vice versa on a daily basis, especially during this time. It's very important to have somebody who can communicate between the two and make sure that all of the needs are met from both sides and to make sure that overall our public health is being handled, especially during an emergency. So what what is the information that needs to go back and forth to them? Obviously, tallies of people that have uh, been diagnosed with COVID-19, unfortunate tallies of people who have passed. I mean, what other things need to be communicated? So it could mean a variety of things from something as small as hand sanitizer to something as large as a homeless shelter or a, a mobile uh, you know, testing site. And I'm joined by someone who is no stranger to emergencies, Chris Ipson. He's here with the Emergency Management Department. You have been with a wide range of interesting uh, incidents for a long period of time, have you not? Yeah, it actually started with uh, 1998, if anybody remembers those days, the Y2K. Jumped right into the Democratic National Convention, protests that we happen to have downtown, earthquakes, windstorms. So I've been through a lot. So we've activated this center, but never to this level, you know, where we've, we're found today at a level one, the highest level in the center. And it's uh, it's taken a lot of wear and tear. We've been here about a month now. Right. And so this is unprecedented times for not only the city, but for the entire country and the world. I am joined by Daniela Pacro, who is in general services, and I don't have a clue as to what that means. So basically, general services, um, we supply most of the departments within the city with all the commodities that they need. Um, anytime they need something, they come to us with a request, and we're able to get that to them. Over the last month, you've said this is at level one and everybody has been, you know, fully on alert and doing everything humanly possible. Is this something that you could have anticipated in your career seeing happen? Is this beyond anything you could have imagined? I mean, from a personal standpoint, obviously from a professional standpoint, you know, you've got that handled. But just knowing what you know and being around what you've seen. Well, actually, pandemics, we, we've talked about pandemics. We've done some uh, tabletop exercises. Mm. And when we went ahead and we were doing the drills, it was very interesting. The responders uh, were saying uh, it could never get this bad. You know, so that was kind of the mentality. We thought about it. Uh, personally, you know, we, we got impacts at the house, children doing online school. Uh, you know, your kid from college comes back home, those kinds of issues, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a new world, uh, the freeways. I'm still not used to the uh, 35, 40 minute commute. That's normally an hour and a half for somebody that lives in Ventura County. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a weird sense of, um, you know, what's the new world gonna look like is one of the things that I think about is, are people gonna be allowed to telecommute more? Uh, you know, so what are the things that come out of this? What's the new normal look like? And have things kind of, I don't want to say calm down, but I mean, has there become like a flow or routine that people have gotten more familiar with in order to be able to communicate across departments and communicate from city to county, et cetera? Yes, actually, we didn't expect something to happen like this so a lot of people weren't educated on this particular topic of a pandemic but now that it's been a month since the pandemic happened and now that we've uh, are in this na uh, national emergency for about a month I feel like people are more familiar with this process and they're more familiar of how to handle and cope with it and right now we're just focusing on recovery and making sure that our supplies needs are met for the upcoming year. What are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis? What's your day like, Danielle? <laughs> well, we started off with about two people, but to this point, we have about six um, members from my department here. Um, and essentially, we're doing the same thing as we do on our day-to-day. -day. We're supplying um, all the departments that are activated during this emergency with supplies that they need. So N95 masks, surgical masks, hand sanitizers, disinfecting products, everything that is essential during this crisis, we're helping the city provide. We primarily like to tap into our resources that we have in our warehouse, in our main warehouse if they don't have the products that we need at our warehouse then we do go to our contract vendors 
just because we're in the middle of a pandemic doesn't necessarily mean that something else can't happen. It's like, you know, there could be a fire, an earthquake, or something that is more typical of a Los Angeles uh, scenario. Is there a plan to have both in place as this is going on? Yeah, so um, one of the things we've been looking at within the last several years is uh, coordinated, very complex attacks from a terrorist being over a, over a freeway shooting of people, uh, an explosion in the downtown area. So we always look at multiple scenarios within one event. So for example, a couple of days ago, we had the 3.3 uh, earthquake, right. which sounds very minimal, but it was on a fault and a lot of people felt it. So that got people a little bit anxious. We are in very hot weather right now. We're expecting some uh, gusty winds so uh, fire threat is always with us and so we understand that that's something we'd have to respond to now we we know the center's open so we feel we have that warm start we always like to have uh, but people are worn out and they've been here a long time so how are they going to respond to dealing with a fire threat let's say that were to happen one of our big things that we do here is opening up shelters notifying the public are you in an evacuation area do we want you to get ready to go those kinds of things so we definitely have that we have what we call red cells and that's folks that are the forward thinkers our advanced planners like for example for the weekend cooling centers is a big thing we do for the public if it gets to certain heat thresholds uh, so we're ready to pull the trigger on some cooling centers they're not open right now but we can we literally make that a phone call away where we can open up a cooling center we would need a nursing uh, co uh, component of that because we got to check folks's temperatures with COVID going on so uh, those are the kind of things that we do we're not only looking at covid but we also have advanced planning components which are looking at that fire that earthquake what are we going to do with mass care communications if all these things go down how do you make sure everybody gets information yeah so one of the things that we're looking at is uh, satellite communications right so we have a very robust satellite program every um, head of the city council and every council member has a satellite phone the mayor the chief of police all these top level officials officials and we do monthly drills with them. We actually make them open up that phone and make a phone call. We do have backup generation capabilities in this building so if the power were to go out we have the capability to still transmit. Uh, we use the internet, social media. I mean we're looking at every way to get the information out. Our thing is we have one message but many messengers. We're looking at Nextdoor, Facebook, Instagram, all of those social media components, obviously traditional media. Technology moves so so fast, right. how do we keep up to it and uh, how do we leverage all that information? When we're not in a pandemic situation and a crisis to this degree, what, is, what exactly does General Services do for the city of Los Angeles? Um, like I mentioned, we supply anywhere from office supplies to furniture for the departments, um, traffic cones. Um, we support our fleet department and all the other departments within the city to get them exactly all the physical items that they need to do their job on a day to day basis. So when this is all calm down somewhat and the storm has uh, you know rested a bit uh, what happens with you what happens with your world so we still prepare for uh, public health emergencies so stuff that we may not think will be an issue just like a mass pandemic we never thought that we this would be another issue since a hundred years ago mm -hmm. but we got to prepare in case anything happens one of the big plans that I, I focus on here is our medical countermeasures our mass prophylaxis uh, point of dispensing plan, oh, okay. which basically means that if we get hit with any anthrax attack, we have an emergency stockpile and we'll be able to help people out. We have to make sure to check that our stockpiles are okay, they're up to date and they're not expired, and we got to uh, put more supplies in there if needed. You understand how important it is what it is that you are doing, correct? I appreciate that, and I've been told that a few times, and I actually was called a first responder by somebody the other day, and that kind of touched my heart. I mean. We typically think of first responders as fire, police, nurses, and doctors, and all that. So, I mean, just for people to understand that we are there to support the city as well, it, it really warms our heart as well. Thank you for doing all of this wonderful work because it, without people like you and without people in this room, you know, it could be a lot worse. So, congratulations and thank you very much. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you for having us on and uh, sharing the message out there with the Angelinos. My pleasure.